Hello and welcome everyone to yet another interesting episode of Polity Primer. Today we are going to discuss the Central Information Commission. Okay, so information in any democracy is the currency of democracy, is the foundational building block of a democracy. And in India, information is guaranteed through the Right to Information Act or the RTI Act of 2005. If you talk about right to information, it is also a very basic human rights that is guaranteed under the UDHR as well or the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as well. In this discussion, we are going to study about the CIC or the Central Information Commission. We are also going to see the powers and functions of the Chief Information Commission. And we are also going to examine the State Information Commission. We are also going to analyze the pressing issues that the post of Central Information Commission is facing or the post of Chief Information Commissioner is facing. The RTI Act as has been argued by the activist is being diluted by the central government. So, we are going to look at all of the pressing issues that is happening in the RTI Act. And in the end, we are going to see a practice question for your prelims examination and a practice question for your mains examination. So, if I talk about the background of our today's topic, this news has been taken from the Indian Express newspaper and it states that Hira Lal Samaria sworn in as the Chief Information Commissioner. Can you imagine the post of CIC was lying vacant since October 3 when the ex CIC terms ended and the Supreme Court has also rebuked the parliament that what are you trying to do? The RTI Act is a transformative act and due to the vacancy in the posts of CIC and information commissioners as well as in the SICs, what is happening is the RTI Act is being reduced into a dead letter. So, the Supreme Court had rebuked the parliament in a judgment uh, and the parliament has now taken action and has upon appointed Hiralal Samaria as the Chief Information Commissioner. This brings us to the moot question of our today's discussion that what is Central Information Commission? So, if I talk about the establishment of the CIC, the CIC was established by the central government in 2005 under the provisions of the Right to Information Act of 2005. So, it is a statutory body. Statutory body and not a constitutional body okay so i hope you understand the difference between a statutory body and a constitutional body statutory body is that body which is established through a statute or a legislation and constitutional body is those bodies which are specifically mentioned in our indian constitution okay if i talk about the membership of cic it consists of a chief information commissioner and not more than 10 information commissioners so, let us now further discuss about CIC, the appointment of the Chief Information Commissioner because the appointment also remains in news. Okay. So, they are appointed by the President on the recommendation of a committee and the members of the committee are firstly the Prime Minister as the Chairman. Then comes the Leader of the Opposition. Leader of the opposition and then comes a cabinet minister who is nominated by the prime minister. So, this is the composition of the committee appoint, uh, which is responsible for appointment of CIC and other information commissioners. Okay. Now, if you talk about the jurisdiction, the jurisdiction of the commission extends over all central public authorities. Kindly remember this point that it is, you know, empowered to examine all central public authorities. And if you talk about the controversy related to the tenure, so the tenure is till 65 years or for 5 years. Whichever is more, okay. So, the tenure was defined under the RTI Act. But what did the central government do? It amended the RTI Act in 2019. 
and said that no we are not going to pro follow the provisions of the RTI Act it, the tenure will no longer be a legislative tenure it will be an executive function and the central government was empowered to decide the tenure of CIC and SICs and the information co uh, commissioners as well. So, this amendment was brought in the year 2019 and this amendment is very controversial in nature. Why? Because it passes the, pa uh, uh, you know, the power of appointment, the tenure, the security of tenure into the hands of the executive that is the parliament and it is no longer a legislative tenure that is granted to the CICs and uh, SICs and the information commissioners. If you talk about the reappointment, they are not eligible for any kind of reappointment. So, this provision also is very controversial in nature. Okay. Now, let us talk about, yes, the tenure. So, the chief election commissioner and an information commissioner shall hold the office for such term as prescribed by the central government or until they attain the age of uh, 65 years whichever is earlier so this is what i was explaining to you before also that the tenure often remains in controversy the activists argue that it should be a legislative kind of a tenure that is specified in the rti act and not at the power of the tenure the security of the tenure of the cic's and information commissioners should not be in the hands of the central government because it will definitely impact their independence impartiality etc but as of now the central government has the power to determine the tenure of the CICs and other information commissioners. Okay. Now, let us discuss the powers and functions of the CIC. So, it is the duty of the commission to receive and inquire into a complaint from any person who has not been able to submit an information request because of non-appointment of a public information officer. So, see, if you are facing or uh, requiring any kind of assistant in any information, you can uh, approach this uh, office known as the public information commissioner. But uh, due to the lack of appointment of a public information officer, the CIC is empowered to tackle with all of the information that you want to submit to the CIC. And it can be related to any of the issues where whether you are, you know, wanting to complain about the uh, corruption that is going on or you want to uh, you know file an RTI etc. So, everything goes to the commission who has been refused information that was requested. So, the CIC also acts as a appellate body. Okay, how? So, you can approach the commission uh, whenever you are facing a refusal to give information by any public authority because the CIC has jurisdiction over all central public authorities. Okay who has not received response to his information request within the specified time limits. So, if the authority is, you know, taking a lot of time to process your RTI query, then also you can approach the commission. Furthermore, who thinks the fees charged are unreasonable? So, RTI is only free for certain categories of people. You have to pay a fees for, you know, furnishing information through RTI. And if the fees they are charging is unreasonable in nature, definitely you can approach the commission in this regard. And who thinks information given is incomplete or misleading or false, okay? And any other matter related to obtaining information. So, you can see that the main function of the CIC is like an appellate body appellate body and it sees that the RTI act is not misused the authorities are not misusing their powers okay so this is a very important body that is constituted under the RTI act okay the commission can order inquiry into any matter if there are reasonable grounds sue motor power so the commission is also empowered to order inquiry if there is a blatant violation of rti act or they, there is corruption that is happening or they find out that an important provision has been violated of the rti act they are empowered to order inquiry on their own motion they don't require a written complaint or a oral complaint in this regard okay while inquiring the commission has the powers of a civil court very important that the commission also has judicial powers attached to it what do we understand by that the commission has power of a civil court that means it can you know collect evidences it can call for documents it can summon it can you know function like a civil court so this is a very important judicial power that is given to the cic now let us understand the other functions of cic
the other functions of cic include during the inquiry of a complaint the commission may examine any record which is under the control of the public authority and no such record may be withheld from it on any ground so you cannot just you know say that we are not going to furnish you the records no this is not going to happen the commission is in part to examine all of the records if they find, find any irregularity okay the commission has the power to secure compliance of its decision from the public authority the commission submits an annual report to the central government on the implementation of the provisions of the rti act and this report is placed before each house of the parliament for consideration so this in uh, you know in crux was the powers and functions of the cic now let us understand the state information commission which also falls under the in right to information act and it is also an important body that is constituted in the state governments okay so it is constituted by the state government as i have mentioned before and it has one sic or the state chief commissioner and not more than 10 state information commissioners to be appointed by the governor on the recommendation of the appointments committee headed by the chief minister so uh, in uh, say CIC or the Central Information Commission, the appointments are made by the President of India on the recommendations of a committee headed by the Parliament, uh, sorry, Prime Minister. In the case of SIC, the appointments are made by the Governor on the uh, recommendation of a committee that is, you know, headed by the Chief Minister for the states. Okay. Now, let us understand what are the pressing issues. Why are we discussing Central Information Commission? What are the pressing issues that the activists are arguing about, are worried about? So, the first issue is vacancy. Vacancy in the posts of CICs and SICs. CICs, SICs and Information Commissioners. You know that uh, the sanction strength is 10 Information Commissioners, but currently we only have two ICs. Many of the state information commissioners are missing. They are the posts are not being filled. So all of this is leading to pendency of cases. You know, lack of uh, transparency, lack of uh, information. The people are not able to receive any information if their commission is too short staffed. What happened in 2020 May? The Jharkhand SIC was completely staffless, and that is why the people were not able to in receive any kind of information. So, on one hand, you are giving us the right to information and on the second hand, you are saying that, uh, okay, due to the structural or technical errors, we are not going to provide you the requested information. So, see the dichotomy that is happening and that is why this is such a pressing issue that is raised again and again by the activists, okay. Then there is lack of transparency. As I was explaining to you before also that now the tenure, security of tenure completely lies in the central government that now they are going to decide what will be the tenure of the central information commissioner or the chief information commissioners and other information commissioners. So, this will decrease, obviously this will decrease the level of transparency. The CICs, if they are, you know, coming directly under the security of their tenure is coming directly under the hands of central government, they will be, you know, deterrent, it will cast a deterrent effect, they will uh, not be able to, you know, work against the uh, corruption and uh, accountability that is happening in the central government. So, they will not be able to proceed against the central government because they know that their tenure is not secure. So, definitely there is going to be a lack of transparency. Then there is a huge piling up of backlogs of cases. Why? Because of the vacancy in the uh, commission. So, as of now, as I have told you that we only have two information commissioners and this chief information commissioner was also appointed very recently. So, due to the short staffage, there is a huge pendency or piling up of cases. Then there is low public awareness. How many of you actually know how to file an RTI? I am not sure because uh, most of the people are not aware that they can, you know, seek certain information by filing an RTI. So, RTI is the least discussed topic, least discussed, uh, you know, scheme of the government. In fact, if, uh, if, the, if you talk about the interests of the government, the government does not want to promote RTI because it increases accountability, it, you know, refuses corruption. And if you talk about the DPDP bill or the personal data protection bill or the act, DPDP act, there is a blanket ban on, you know, furnishing any kind of personal information. 
so they are you know hiding under the garb of privacy and saying that no we are not going to furnish any personal information and again the activists are arguing that you cannot put such a blanket ban on uh, you know furnishing of personal information because it will defeat the whole purpose of having right to information and right to information is a very crucial legislation for india it is also known as the sunshine legislation it is also known as the legislation which has brought revolution in our system of governance so that is why the activists are very worried that rti is being slowly slowly diluted by the central government and these are some of the pressing issues in the uh, you know appointment and vacancy of the central information commission so these were all of the issues and uh, definitely they are going to harm the uh, provisions of the RTI Act. Okay. With this we come to a conclusion of our today's discussion. We have seen who, who, what is the composition of the uh, Central Information Commission. We have also seen that controversy related to the tenure. We have also analyzed the state information commissions. We have also seen the pressing issues that the activists are very worried about. Now let us discuss a practice question for your prelims examination. So the question is consider the following statements. Your statement number one is CIC is a constitutional body. Your statement number two is the president can remove CIC from his post and your statement number three is the CIC is an appellate body under the RTI Act. Which of the following statements given above is are correct? Your options are option A is one only, option B is one and two only, option C is two and three only, option D is one, two and three. Kindly drop your answers in the comment box below. Now let us analyze a practice question for your mains examination. So the question is critically assess the post of chief information commissioner and its relevance in the current times. Firstly, we will introduce who is the chief information commissioner. You will write about the central information commission. Then you will also write the issues that are going on as I have discussed in my discussion today. And then you can conclude holistically that we do need to figure out a way out, way forward. And the RTI Act has been amended two times since last five years. So there are reforms that are needed in the RTI Act. We need to firstly fill the vacancy in the uh, Central Information Commission. We need to decrease the pendency of cases so as to enforce information as a crucial part of the democracy. So, you can conclude very holistically by writing that there are, uh, you know, need for reforms in the Central Information Commission and especially the vacancy should be filled as soon as possible. So, you can conclude very holistically. I hope this session was insightful for you. If you have any feedback regarding this session, kindly drop it in the comment box below. If you found the discussion to be helpful, kindly like the video and subscribe to our channel for more such updates. Thank you.